Hi, my name is Liz and this is the Pink Lookbook. We have just finished discussing all the outfits of the Matte Gala red carpet and we are already on the way to the next red carpet at the film festival in Cannes. Cannes is a bit different because as you may know, the Met Gala is all about the over-the-top outfits, how people interpret the theme. Cannes actually has quite a strict dress code. For example, women are not allowed to bring bigger bags such as tote bags to the red carpet or they have to wear high heels. This is also something that is discussed a lot. Some people also protested against this and for men it means dinner jacket and bow tie. And even though there are more rules, I still find it quite interesting to follow this red carpet. And in this video, I'm going to discuss selected outfits from the red carpet, but also from other events. This is not a video with a full overview of all the outfits from Cannes. There are plenty of other videos that you can watch for that. But if there are outfits that you would like to discuss, please share them in the comments below. As I said in other videos, I'm focusing only on the fashion. This is not about gossiping about certain people or bashing certain people. And this is also a non-sponsored video, so I'm just sharing my personal opinion and my research here. Let's start with an interesting vintage moment. Hunter Schaefer wore Armani Privé from 2011. And this was a very special collection because uh, Giorgio Armani was inspired by two sources of inspiration, actually. On the one hand, he said he was inspired by the gleam of gemstones. So we have a lot of shimmering material. On the other hand, he was inspired by outer space. And space has been a very important source of inspiration for many designers. Think about Pierre Cardin or about Mugler. And this space topic is very clear throughout the whole 2011 collection because the models were wearing these uh, space hats by Philip Tracy. And also this gleam of gemstones is reflected, as I said before, also in the garments. Uh, Armani actually used a special type of technology to achieve this shimmering effect that we also see in Hunter Schaefer's dress. And I did some research and I think the dress that Hunter Schaefer is wearing was look 35 from that collection, just without the white panel. I actually think it works a bit better. And it also has this shimmer. In 2011, a lot of fashion journalists actually said that this shimmer reminded them of liquid mercury. So this is another nod to the outer space theme. And I really liked this look also because of the shape. It's quite interesting because the top is a bit long. So it feels as if the wearer is stepping out of that dress. I think she looked beautiful. It worked really well. It worked even better when I saw it's a vintage moment. I was not a big fan of her Prada look. I have to say I found it a bit too gimmicky. What I did like was her Vivian Westwood floral dress. And there were quite a few people who wore Vivian Westwood this year. Another person was Eva Green in a black uh, skirt and top combo, which I actually really like. I'm just not sure if it fits to come, but I think this is also an Eva Green style. And also Helena Christensen wore bespoke Vivian Westwood. It's a very beautiful white dress with a cape. It actually reminded me of the pret a porter Spring Summer 2024 collection. There was also this very pretty white dress in the collection. I did not like her styling too much, especially the hair, but this is a minor detail. And another person who also wore Vivian Westwood actually twice was Candice Swanpole. The first one was also a white tulle dress with lace and also embroidered leaves. I think it was an okay look. I actually preferred her black dress by Vivian Westwood because again, it was just more drama. It was more Westwood. We have the corset, we have this accentuated body shape. I think this was a really successful look. And then one vintage outfit broke social media. Why, of course, Naomi Campbell wore archival Chanel. So we have two icons here. I think she looked great. I think she and her stylist, Law Roach, who is also the stylist of Zendaya, did a very good job. He also wore Chanel in Cannes. And why is this dress so significant? It's much more than just being vintage. Naomi Campbell herself actually presented it on the runway for the fall 1996 Haute Couture collection by Karl Lagerfeld for Chanel. So this is already quite a nice story that she still fits into that dress that she wore in 1996 and she still 
looks amazing. And there's a small difference to the original look 86 from the collection. The difference to the original styling was that she wore a black sheath dress underneath. So the original dress was a bit more modest. This one was definitely more daring because we have the transparent stripes. We also see the typical uh, Chanel house coat. So the stripes are something that Chanel herself pretty much liked this typical French striped pattern, but also the pearl strands at the top are also a Chanel house coat. But there's actually another reason why this dress is so significant. It's actually the collection itself. This 1996 fall couture collection is one of the most famous collections by Karl Lagerfeld for Chanel. He was inspired by Coco Chanel's furniture. She had a big collection of Asian lacquer furniture, this dark furniture. Even Karl Lagerfeld himself had a big passion for this. I also talked about this in my other video about Karl Lagerfeld's Orientalism. And he was very much inspired by these pieces of furniture and took it up in these very famous coats. And another very special characteristic is this very exaggerated elongated silhouette that all of these uh, garments create. And then there's an interesting link to another guest on this year's red carpet because one of these very famous coats with this Asian design was sold at an auction for 300,000 US dollars. And it was from the collection of Muna Ayub. She collects haute couture garments and she sold it because she said on the one hand, she didn't fit into it anymore and she only wore it once. And on the other hand, she wanted other people to appreciate Karl Lagerfeld's designs for Chanel. And Muna Ayub unsurprisingly wore haute couture for this red carpet as well. She wore Schiaparelli from the spring summer 2024 haute couture collection. And you may remember this dress. I also discussed this in my video about the collection. It was the dress that closed the whole collection. And it was the one where I also said I would like to wear it one day, but I think this is wishful thinking. And for Muna Ayub, they adapted it a bit. The neckline is now a bit higher. The structure is a bit lower. Actually, I prefer the original drama of the dress, but I can see why she had it changed. It still looks very beautiful. And another person who also wore Schiaparelli Haute Couture 2024 was Demi Moore. And probably you also remember this dress. It's this cream dress with this signature panel here on the side. And when we think of the runway show, I said compared to all the other things that we saw on the runway back then, it looks a bit simple because before that we had the robot dress, we had the cowboy elements and it looked very much reduced. But I think my thesis was right when I said when you see this dress on a red carpet or at another event, it's still very much a dress that stands out because of this signature shape. And I think Demi Moore looked amazing in it and there would be many other looks of Demi Moore this year in Cannes. For example, the yellow Oscar de la Renta dress and also this really beautiful jewelry with it. But I would like to keep it short and simple here. So let's move on to the next one. Selena Gomez in Saint Laurent. It's a beautiful dress. She looks beautiful. I do have to say I'm not sure if it's perfect for her because it makes her look much older than she actually is. But I think they chose it because of the necklace. The necklace should be the star. It's the Diamond Swan necklace by Bulgari. And according to the brand, uh, it took 2000 hours to make this necklace. It features a 20 carat diamond in the middle and it is uh, two birds, two swans closing their wings. Um, there are rumors about the price of this necklace. One rumor is about 2.4 million US dollars. And of course, we also need to discuss Anya Taylor-Joy. She had many different outfits, of course, a lot of them by Dior. She's a brand ambassador, but I actually would like to show you this orange outfit by a Paris-based label Adline because I really liked the structure of this dress, uh, the color, how she paired it with this big hat. Adline was founded in 2016 by Antonin Tron, who studied in Antwerp and then worked for many very famous fashion houses in Paris. And he's a surfer, so a lot of inspiration comes from the ocean and from surfing. He says he takes uh, the movement, the energy of the sports into his garments. And I think we can see this in this orange dress. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of energy even though the dress itself is quite simple and I think it's also a perfect fit for the French Riviera. Now let's talk reinterpretations. We already covered vintage and reinterpretations of archival gowns has become very popular recently and this year especially
especially by Balenciaga. We saw it at the Oscars. Carrie Mulligan was wearing a reinterpretation of the flamenco dress by Balenciaga. And also more recently at the Met Gala, Naomi Watts and Nicole Kidman wore reinterpretation of archival Balenciaga designs. There must be something going on at Balenciaga because this is the third time in a row of red carpets that we see such a reinterpretation. There's something going on with creative director Demna. Maybe this is a newfound passion of his. Whatever the reason, I think Lily Gladstone looks stunning in this dress. I think the color looks amazing on her. And it's actually a reference of a fall winter 1959 Balenciaga design. And I think in general, she and her stylist, uh, Jason Rambert, have been doing a great job. She looks amazing in Cannes. We have this yellow gown, but then also a red one by the New York label Macarian. And I even liked her very simple Gucci look and also the Gucci gown that she wore. So I think she's actually one of my favorites uh, this year in Cannes. And speaking of reinterpretations, I don't think this next look requires a lot of explanation. Iseu, the French singer-songwriter and model in Dior, and this is a reference of the famous bar suit. The bar suit was part of Christian Dior's very first haute couture collection for his own house in 1947. That collection was named Corolle, but we probably all know it under the new look. This term was coined by the American press and it referred to the new shape or a shape that Christian Dior reintroduced because he went back to the hourglass figure requiring corsets or padded hips. And we can actually say in terms of female empowerment, this new look was actually a move backwards because in the 20s and 30s, the women had freed themselves from the corset, the shapes or silhouettes were narrow or straight. And now Christian Dior reintroduces the hourglass figure. And this was called the new look because it was very dominant until the 1960s, until women again freed themselves from this look requiring a corset. I appreciate the idea of this modern interpretation in black and white, but something does not work for me and I can't really say what it is. Maybe you let me know what you think about this reinterpretation, if it works for you or not. And there was actually a second reinterpretation on the red carpet worn by Rada Mohammed in red. A lot of people loved it. Again, I'm a bit on the fence. Maybe the reason is that I am kind of over these reinterpretations. In terms of fashion history, they are interesting, but at the same time, I think it's also kind of lazy of these brands to just reproduce these archival garments. They could also give us something new. Or maybe the issue is that uh, this bar suit is so iconic. Everybody knows the bar suit who works in fashion or who has an interest in fashion. And even people outside of fashion have probably seen it in some version. And maybe because it's too much of this obvious reference, maybe that's the issue I have. It may be more interesting for these reinterpretations to pick archival garments that are not known or not so known to the public, because then we would learn a new perspective, we would learn something new. Maybe that's the issue that I have with it. But let me know in the comments below what you think about these two reinterpretations of the bar suit. And just to close this women's wear section, I have two more examples. One is Shanina Sheikh in Suhair Murad. I think he's the king of the red carpet. I like his designs and I really like the style of this dress, the silhouette, also the neckline is very interesting. I just have a minor piece of criticism and maybe that's just me, but I think this uh, dress deserved some steaming or ironing. Uh, maybe that's the style, but I think it would look better if somebody had steamed it before she left. And the second example is Hofit Golan. I hope I said this name correctly in Australian label Viviana Laurie Keats uh, in their Giselle cocktail dress. I think it's a very fun interpretation. It looks really young and fresh because I like the nude tone paired with the pale blue. I think it's quite a fun dress. And just to close this video, I would like to briefly mention also a bit of menswear. As I mentioned before, uh, it is a bit more difficult because of the dress code. They have to wear a dinner jacket and a bow tie. One interpretation that I really liked is by a French uh, actor, William Avadi in Brunello Cuccinelli. And similar to the Met Gala, Barry Kyogen is among my favorites, even though he skipped the bow tie, but I think it's the look, it's this interesting jacket and also the shirt. And with this shirt, you can see it's not really one that works with a bow tie. Another person who managed to get in without a bow tie, 
uh, is Chris Hemsworth, but I think in his case he didn't really have a reason why he didn't wear a bow tie. He just showed up with this open shirt and I think it looked way too casual, call me traditional, but I think he should have respected the dress code. But there was another outfit of his that I actually really liked. It was this blush pink suit. I really liked the color. I think the suit looked really smart, but I have a minor criticism concerning the shoes. I liked the color, the dark brown but I didn't like that it was uh, Chelsea boots because in my opinion, these are winter shoes and now it's May in Cannes, it's spring, it's early summer. I think uh, a different pair of shoes would have worked better, but that's a minor piece of criticism. And this is also the end of my video about the outfits at the Cannes Film Festival this year. And I'm really, really curious about you. What do you think about the Cannes Film Festival overall and the red carpet? Are you still following it or do you find it boring? Are there any outfits that you particularly liked or are there some that you disliked? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. You can also find more fashion related articles on my website, thepinklookbook.com. And if you're interested, you can also check out my fashion label, Pelagona. And if you enjoyed this video and you haven't watched it yet, I have another video video about the Met Gala red carpet. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one.